everyone, welcome to Enigma channel. For today's video, we are going to solve uh, this problem from William Mathematical Putnam Challenge. And it was held on 2022, the 83rd, um, 83rd of that competition. So right now, the problem states that Suppose that P of X is equal to A sub 1 X plus A sub 2 X squared plus dot 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 plus up until to A sub N X raised to N is a polynomial with integer coefficients with A sub 1 being odd. Suppose that E raised to P of X is equal to B sub 0 plus B sub 1 X plus B sub 2 X squared plus etc. Uh, up to infinity. So this is an infinite series for all, of, for all, for all X. So suppose um, prove that b sub k is non-zero for all k greater than equal zero. So um, if you wanted to try this problem, feel free to post the video and um, and just click the um, resume if you are uh, ready to see the proof. So right now, let us prove this. Right now, um, this problem. Um, I want you to observe that p of x is given as this one. I mean this one. So this is a this is a polynomial, a finite polynomial, in which the order or the degree, the highest degree is n. So right now, um, let us use the definition of derivatives, which is um, we will be employing some um, calculus here in order to prove that b sub k is not zero for all k greater than equal zero. So right now, um, let us begin. Uh, first, first, first of all, observe that. Observe that. Um, the derivative d over dx of um, e raised to p of x is just equivalent to um, it is just equivalent by uh, the chain rule this is just p prime of x times uh, the uh, exponential so e raised to p of x so this is by chain rule So right now, um, according to the given that we have, uh, b sub uh, e raised to p of x is given as b sub 0 plus b sub 1x plus b sub 2x squared and so on. So right now, this is just equivalent to the derivative of that polynomial which is, uh, if we take the derivative of that polynomial or the infinite series, uh, th that would result into b sub 1 plus 2b sub 2 x plus 3b sub 3 x squared and so on right now um, we get uh, an equation that um, that relates the p of x to the e raised to p of x which, which is this one or uh, this two so since we have that, we, we have this, um, therefore, we can say that uh, p prime of x times e raised to p of x is equivalent to b sub 1 plus 2b sub 2 x plus 3b sub 3 x squared <coughs> and so on. And of course, since we ha we have an, a given f of, a p of x, since this is given, then we can just take the derivative of this p of x in order to get the p prime of x. So therefore, um, we can now uh, expand this accor uh, accordingly. So this is just a sub 1 because we, can, we take the first derivative of p of x, so which is um, the first term is a sub 1 because x will be cancelled and next is 2 a sub 2 x plus 3 a sub 3 x squared and etc 
up until 2 um, n a sub n x times a uh, x raised to n minus 1 and times the quantity um, the, let us just expand the e, of e times v of x e raised to v of x sorry. so this is just v sub 0 plus v sub 1 x plus v sub 2 x squared and so on and since this is an infinite series then we could not we, um, we cannot have an, an end term or the last term so right now um, we have this so we already have this so uh, we just we will just copy the right hand side of the equation so which is this one and and so on so right now we have this exp uh, equation we can now divide both sides by this one in order to get the pure a, a sub 1 or in and a sub n terms in the left hand side so by doing so we get uh, a sub 1 plus 2 a sub 2 x plus 3 a sub 3 x squared up until um, n a sub n x raised to n minus 1 which is just e equals to b sub 1 plus 2 b sub 2 x plus 3 b sub 3 x squared and so on and of course since we divide both sides by the by that um, we get okay, we get um, also b sub 0 on the denominator plus b sub 1 x plus b sub 2 x squared and so on now that we have this um, but we um, <coughs> we can now manipulate uh, or prove that uh, for um, I mean by relating the a sub 1 up to a sub n um, coefficients into the b sub k coefficients so um, observe that if I let x equals 0 then the, the terms in this one or the Yes, the other than the a sub one will be will vanish, as well as in this one and in the denominator. Same for the denominator. Therefore, um, by doing so, let us proceed. Uh, if we let if we let x be equal to zero then we get then we get um, on the right hand, left hand side we only get um, a sub 1 and the, and the rest are uh, 0 because they are multiplied by zeros so a sub 1 on the right hand side uh, on the left hand side and as for the right hand side we have uh, b sub b sub 1 on the, non, the numerator because all the terms other than b sub 1 are going to be are going to vanish and as well as the denominator so b sub 0 will be a remaining term so therefore b sub 1 all over b sub 0 so now that we have this wait. so now that we have this we can prove, uh, we can reason there, uh, we can use reasoning, our reasoning, since it is, it was given that I a sub 1 is odd, so let us note that, but because, but a sub 1 is odd, therefore, therefore, it cannot be zero. It 
okay so that is our reasoning here because it is true that <coughs> all add numbers are from positive to say 1 3 5 7 9 11 and so on and as for the negative one uh, as for the negative numbers or negative odds we have negative 1 negative 3 and negative 5 and so on so um, we know that by definition um, even number is r or r 0 2 4 6 8 10 12 and so on so therefore a sub 1 has an assurance that it cannot be zero therefore we can now use that um, given in our b sub 1 and b sub 0 therefore it implies that since a sub 1 is odd and there is no way that b sub 1 is zero also uh, b sub 0 is zero because um, if, if b sub 0 is zero then it will be in the undefined number therefore since a sub 1 is an odd number and it was not given that uh, a sub 1 is undefined therefore we have an assurance that b sub 1 and b sub 0 are both non-zero numbers therefore it implies that b sub 1 b sub 2 are oh sorry b sub 1 and b sub 0 are non-zero so we have this first step so let us try to use this manner in order to get uh, in order to prove or see if the other b sub k terms or in coefficients are non-zero indeed so right now I want you to I want you to use this um, this equation again in order to find the other um, in order to prove if or in, or in order to see if b sub k are indeed non-zero or for all k greater than equal zero. So there, um, let us use this again. So let us try. So therefore, um, um, what I'm going to do here is to take the derivative again with respect to x so that uh, the unnecessary terms or coefficients here are going to be reduced in some way. So uh, let us differentiate. we get um, of course we if, if we apply the derivative on both sides we get um, on the right left hand side we get um, this will become zero because this is a, a constant number and as for this one this will become is 2a sub 2 and all the remaining terms are going to be uh, let's say this is these are um, this must have uh, all uh, these terms must have uh, uh, x in the in, uh, are multiplied by x uh, sorry so the, um, we can just denote this as to say this is o sub 1 x because they are the terms that have x terms or that have x in it and also as for this one um, we can use the um, we can use the um, quotient rule because this is a uh, co this is a rational function that's why um, I'm going to use this formula which is f prime g minus g prime f all over g squared so this is the derivative of um, f of f all over g so by using that formula we can we can find that the derivative of that um, expression on the right hand side is just um, of course the derivative is going to be 2b sub 2 on, the fir on its first term and uh, the rest are all x terms 
or with x times and multiplied by the denominator which is b sub 0 plus o sub 3 let's just, let's just call these terms as o sub 3 okay in order to make it short because it will be it will take us long if we write all of those and of course if we take the derivative of the denominator it will give us b sub 1 and the rest are um, um, with x terms so let us just write that as o sub 4 because they are all different that's why I'm using the subscript <coughs> and multiplied by the original um, original terms in here so the, the numerator so this is just o sub 5 let us just call that as o sub 5 since those uh, since those terms are, are are all with x so right now um, so right now it is we can just now we can now just divide uh, the uh, this by the square of the denominator which is just b sub 0 plus b sub um, okay so uh, uh, we already used that so we just we can just call it as um o sub 3 because in here this is the original denominator this term so we use o sub 3 in order to denote the terms with x b sub 0 plus o sub 3 of x squared so that is the derivative of the right hand side right now i'm going to use the again our um in the manner of the previous one so let us just let x be equal zero then we get then we get we get um we get another um another equation so these terms are all going to be zero because these are polynomials so therefore if we just plug in zero on this x or on this polynomial that with terms x this is these are these are going to be to vanish so therefore uh, all all these uh, all of the uh, terms with x are going to be zero therefore we are now left with 2a sub 2 on the right on the left hand side and 2b sub 2 times b sub 0 and minus b sub 1 times b sub 1 okay and divided by and divided by divided by divided by the b sub 0 squared so now that we have this we can just um, simplify this into um, this is just okay let us just simplify so this is just a sub 2 and the first term will be um, b sub 2 all over b sub 0 and minus the um, this is just one half or one half times the b sub 1 all over b sub 2 or sorry b sub 0 and then squared now that we have this um, we must uh, we must remember that um, from our previous um, from our previous findings we know that um, this has an equivalent this term has an equivalent um, term in terms of um, a sub a sub 1 or a sub n so this is just a sub 1 as we can see here b sub 1 or all over b sub 0 is just a sub 1 therefore we can now rewrite this as 
a sub 2 is equals to um, b sub 2 all over b sub 1 or, or all over b sub 0 minus uh, a sub 1 squared all over 2 or it is just equivalent to um, a sub a sub 1 squared divided by 2 divided by 2 uh, plus a sub 2 is just equals to b sub 2 over b sub 0 so now that we have this um, equation now that we have this equation um, we can now use our again our reasoning in order to um, in order to verify whether the b sub 2 is or is in is uh, non-zero also just like b sub 1 and b sub 0 so since we already uh, note that b sub 0 is non-zero therefore we have an assurance that this is not going to be undefined and also uh, as for the left hand side we have this expression a sub 1 squared over 2 plus a sub 2 and I want you to take note that a sub 1 is um, given as odd number so therefore um, odd number squared if you if you square an odd number this is going to be odd also so the proof lies on let us um, consider 2n plus 1 uh, an odd number so square it square it and you get 4n squared plus 4n plus 1 right so right now I, um, this is just 2n squared plus 2n plus 1 so this is just another number let's just say, let us say this is just k therefore this is just 2k plus 1 so therefore we, get, we have proved that um, the, odd, the square of an odd number is just also odd number that's why um, it, is safe to, uh, it is safe to say that um, the odd number squared divided by an even number which is 2 is just an is either improper fraction or proper fraction so <clears throat> therefore this results um, this term results into an non-integer but rather irrational so this is just an error this is just an rational irrational uh, number while this one is an integer or uh, so that's why we can conclude that uh, we can now summarize our um, reasoning so because Non zero, then it would be either improper. Improper. Sorry. So, would uh, would be always would always be be would always be be um um fraction. This cannot be an integer. I mean, that's that's the um, other word. So, um, therefore, even if even if even if a sub two is a negative integer, so let us just. Mm. 
then there, then <clears throat> um, there will be no consolation since this is uh, or this is always a fraction and if we mo minus an integer or add an integer this is not never go to zero that's why um, th that's why a sub 1 squared all over 2 plus a sub 2 is never zero <coughs> which implies that b sub 2 is also non-zero okay so um, by this manner um, right now since we, we already have this um, there is a pattern that's going on here so the pattern I mean the pattern that's going on here is just um, the, um, okay so the pattern here is just so the pattern is wait 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 so the pattern so the pattern here will be um this one so by the by repetition i by 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 repeating this by repeating the process you get the following so this is a uh, this is this is uh, what you will get if you um, repeat the pattern I mean the if you will just take the second derivative of that expression and then let x equal 0 and then take the third derivative of the expression or uh, that equation and let x equal 0 again and so on this is this is this will be the um, this will be the pattern that you will get so um, this is this is it so it's for the second derivative um, you will get this one so um, second derivative gives you second derivative gives you um, a sub 3 Hey, sorry, sorry So, A sub 1 Raised to 3 All over 3 factorial So, from the previous We have all over 2, right? So, in this case You have 3 Times 2 So, um, the previous one Can be written also as 2 factorial Because 2 times 1 is just 2 Wait So, so my line is terrible so it's just 3 factorial and um 3 factorial and of course um this one um this one 3 factorial a sub 1 times a sub 2 plus um, a sub 1 oh sorry a sub 3 which is just equals to um, b sub 3 all over b sub 0 so can you see the pattern b sub 0 is not never going to live here so this is that's why uh, also I want you to take note that this is just um I mean this is just an odd number so odd number okay so odd number uh, so odd ratio t is just another odd and <clears throat> even if you have um an odd here seems 3 times 2 times 1 so all over a sub 1 cube so like the previous reasoning we reasoned we we argue that the a sub 1 squared all over 2 is never going to be an integer but rather a fraction 
just like that uh, argument in this argument also uh, in this case we also use that argument that this term is never going to be an integer that's why we have an we have an assurance that this is never going to be zero even if these terms are going to be zero because some of them are um, um, is this this is also possible I mean this one so it's, it's also possible to happen that's why um, even if this is uh, these are zero then this um, term is never going to be an integer or zero so that's why um, this whole this whole thing in the left hand side is never going to be zero so therefore we have an assurance also that um, that this uh, right hand side um, since v sub 0 is non zero then v sub 3 is also non zero that's why um, v sub 0 I mean wait, wait. since a sub 1 cube all over 3 factorial is never zero I mean it's never an integer then then left hand side is never zero thus b sub 3 b sub 0 is non zero so by this pattern uh, what do we, what we get is um, for this consecutive third derivative set etc we get this so third derivative so since the, um, that equation is since that equation is um, somehow difficult to take uh, to differentiate um, it will take us uh, a long time or uh, yep S uh, several times to uh, several time to arrive at the third derivative and so on the, uh, then we, we should um, it is as it is necessary to see the pattern that is taking place in here so I'm going to see. Uh, we are, we see that um, from this pattern, relying on this pattern, and then of course, um, since this is just an hypotenuse, then we will just prove it by mathematical induction later on. So, okay. So according to this pattern, we have a sub one all over a raised to four all over four factorial plus. a sub I mean a sub 1 a sub 1 squared all over 2 factorial times a sub 2 plus a sub 1 a sub 1 a sub 3 and then lastly a sub 4 so this is just b sub 4 all over b sub 0 so if you are having doubts why we get this um, pattern so you may try to see for yourself by taking the third derivative of the previous um, equation this, this one so right now um, so on so by the same again by the same manner of um, argument arguing so we see that this is just also um, I mean this is not this is never going to be zero this left hand side so it tells us that b sub 4 is also not zero and so on and so forth and this is um, this is the end term or the end derivative gives us the I mean the n minus 1 derivative gives us the a sub 1 over the n factorial plus a sub 1 raised to n minus 2 all over um, n minus 2 factorial times a sub 2 and 
A sub 1 is to N-3 factorial I mean, so, sorry N is to N-3 all over N-3 factorial and lastly I, uh, sorry, multiply by A sub 3 and lastly up until up until um, this A sub N this is just equivalent to B sub N all over B sub 0 which implies that B sub N is never going to be 0 or non zero. So right now, um, using mathematical induction, it is easy to say it is it is it is easy to show that this is indeed the pattern that is taking place in this um, in this um, pattern and this sequence. I mean, yeah. So okay. So if you try to um, to use mathematical induction here you will see that um, this is indeed true so therefore um, therefore by the mathematical induction shows us that shows us that um, for all um, k let us just use k instead of n so k element of natural number so um, we have b sub k is never is not equal to zero or not zero And that in, and also since this is just um, one, two, three, four, five, so this is these are just the counting numbers. Then, um, what, where if k is equal to zero, is it um, still a uh, non-zero? Yes, because b sub zero tells us thus that um, b sub zero is non-zero. Also, so that's why we can now include that, uh, and that includes. And since b sub 0 is non zero then then we show show that we show that b sub k is non zero for all for all k greater than equal zero I mean for all k okay so let us use a proper notation so k uh, positive integers qed so okay so this is how we prove the um the problem number um uh, the problem one in set to be of William Putnam competition. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it. So <coughs> please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like this video if you um if you uh, like this uh, if you like my content. So thank you.